For centuries, people have been trying to figure out what makes the mind work, what makes it tick. They've also been trying to figure out what is happening when things go wrong, when your mind is sick or broken. An exhibit, Mind Maps, Stories from Psychology, at the Science Museum in London, looks at various aspects of psychology through the ages. The exhibit examines how we've tried to figure out what is happening in the mind and the various ways we've tried to mend it when something is amiss. While there are many intriguing stories, I'm going to take a closer look at one story that's particularly electrifying. Electroshock therapy, or electroconvulsive therapy, is a psychiatric treatment where the doctor induces a seizure with the hopes of providing relief for mental illnesses. But when did this seemingly torturous method of treatment begin? As early as the 16th century, there are documents of people using certain potions and agents to induce seizures in the hopes of curing mental illness. But during the 18th century, there were many rumors going around about the wondrous healing potential of electricity. Even Benjamin Franklin and Reverend John Wesley used electricity to help cure them of nervous afflictions such as melancholy and low spirits, as well as other afflictions like headaches and paralysis. Around the same time in Italy, a doctor by the name of Luigi Galvani was experimenting with the use of electricity and suspected that it was nerves that were in control of everything from childbirth to our heart. He suspected correctly, and it was his work with electricity and the relationship with the nerve activity that laid the groundwork for electroshock therapy. But it wasn't until 1934 that the history of electroshock therapy really begins. A Hungarian neuropsychiatrist, Ladislas Meduna, mistook schizophrenia for a seizure and believed that the two disorders were opposites of each other. Meduna began experimenting with a drug called cardiazole that would induce seizures in schizophrenic patients. Soon after, in 1937, the first meeting about convulsive therapy was held in Switzerland. And three years after the proceedings were published, cardiazole convulsive therapy was being practiced all over the world. At the same time, an Italian professor, Hugo Serletti, was experimenting with the use of electric shocks to produce seizures in animals. It was then when he got the idea to use electricity as a substitute for cardiazole, as he noticed that when you applied electricity to the head of a dog, the dog would convulse. Professor Serletti and his partner also remarked that when pigs were given electric shock before being slaughtered, they were put into an anesthetized state. It wasn't until after this revelation that Professor Serletti's partner, Lucio Bini, then tried electroshock therapy on a human for the first time in 1937, and thus, modern electroconvulsive therapy was born. Soon after, Professor Serletti and his partner began trials on humans. They noticed that after 10 to 20 trials, their patients showed a significant effect. Many of them had much improved. One of the good side effects is that the patients would get retrograde amnesia, so they would forget all about the electric shock and wouldn't have any bad feelings towards the therapy. Soon, electroconvulsive therapy replaced the cardiazole convulsive therapy because it was cheaper and apparently less frightening. Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, electroshock therapy became widely used in Europe and North America. It was used to treat everything from depression to schizophrenia. Electroconvulsive therapy is delivered in the form of two brief but powerful shocks by electrodes or paddles pressed to the temples of the patient. The electricity then passes through the brain and causes the patient to have a seizure. But the treatment was violent, so violent that people's bones would often break and some even fractured their spine. The aggressive nature of the treatment required preventative measures such as bodily restraints, mouth guards, and anesthetics to keep the patient from being hurt. The use of electroconvulsive therapy soon began to fade out in the 1960s and 1970s as the anti-psychiatry movement began and many psychiatric drugs became available to help treat the mentally ill. However, electroconvulsive therapy is still used today to treat severe depression when other methods like talk therapy and medication fail to work. Electroconvulsive therapy has come a long way from the frightening form in the 1950s. Now patients are sedated and hardly move when they are given an electric shock. Further, patients are only given 6 to 12 treatments instead of the hundreds some of the patients in the 1950s received. Despite the lengthy history of electroconvulsive therapy, we still don't fully understand the mechanisms in which it works to treat depression. But that's another mystery for another day. I'm Isha Gajewski for Catalyst Science News.